Hey. hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a minute since we've seen each other. I know. I've recorded. How have you been in the past two, three weeks? Yeah. The majority good, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, so many great things are happening mm-hmm. in my life. And um, yeah, I mean, the majority of my life is good considering, well, I don't know if I want to say that. Do I want to say that? The listener's like, say it. <laughs> Do it. I don't know. Just thinking about uh, anxiety medication, mm-hmm. but also like, ugh, I don't mm-hmm. want to take medication. Mm-hmm. So that's just one thing that I'm like, hmm, can I handle it on my own? Or do I want to? <laughs> so <laughs> that's just one thing. That's, well, thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big decision to make. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. But also, well, no, you're right. It is. It's an important one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's no right or wrong about it. Yeah. So what's right for you? Thank you. Mm-hmm. How's your week's been? Good. My admin had her baby. Oh, wow. That so, was quick. No. How long does it take to have a baby? <laughs> she was pregnant <laughs> when I hired her. <laughs> I guess I'm thinking, I, for some reason, just then I was like, a baby takes weeks to come out, but probably just a couple hours. <laughs> when does a baby come? Probably a day or two. Oh, I God. mean, sometimes it can be a few hours versus some can be in labor for an extended period of time but no she had her baby um last like a week ago two weeks ago so i'm i'm kind of handling all the practice by myself without Mm. the support of my admin (laughs) so um, but it's been a nice welcome slowdown i guess was the point um is i purposely have like not taken any new clients and i've let my schedule thin out a little bit so i can have Mm. the time to do that and it's it's been really great to, cause I just realized how much I was always on the go and feeling like I had to do something and be, I was just busy. And I mean, I was just busy, but it's been nice to, I've been wanting to adopt a slower pace. And so this was a welcome thing to, to kind of make that happen for me. So I've enjoyed that. And Good for yeah, you. Yeah. Cause that could have went the opposite way mm-hmm. where you felt busier and felt like you had to do more on top of what you were already doing. Yeah. And I'm really thankful that, uh, you know, because it's a group practice, I can, I can stand to, to back off of clients for a little bit that still allows us to keep, keep things growing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been nice. I've been wanting to, I've been working on that in therapy of like when to take breaks and to slow down. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just such a beautiful, I was thinking about that today, how I was feeling that, uh, yeah, how I want to feel that more and where I have felt that and how good it feels to mm-hmm. have downtime. Mm-hmm. Um, which brings me to Jimmy, our guest today. Mm-hmm. His energy I love so much because yeah. it it allows me to slow down. Like he has such mm-hmm. a calm uh, energy that mm-hmm. I just feel I match that. And I talk to him yeah. instead of like there was silences and i was like i'm, I'm just gonna sit in the silence i know i noticed you enjoying the silence oh it was wonderful i know yeah it's neat that's i always like people give you permission to do things and you do that but like even just being around everybody's energy can affect you know when you leave hanging out with somebody you can feel a certain way and he definitely like brought this like slow calming yeah kind of peacefulness mm-hmm. yeah and it's i, I it. what'd you say i, I just enjoyed being around that yeah Mm -hmm. and I was conscious too of like because I really wanted to be like how'd you get there where'd that come from and then I remember like past episodes of us talking about like sometimes there's not a secret people just are how they are like Mm -hmm. they just wind up how they wind up and so I was just like in the silence enjoying him as a person and being like it doesn't Mm -hmm. matter the answer to how he got there. I'm just going to enjoy his presence. Mm -hmm. So that was really nice. Yeah. You got a little emotional too with his story. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I did. And I, I got emotional because I really, Oh man, I'm going to cry again. I really do love him. Like Mm -hmm. I just, um, I feel like we don't, uh, we haven't hung out a lot, but when he's around, Mm, this is interesting. I feel like a lot of the times I give my energy is like giving to people. Mm-hmm. I'm always, which is a treat for me. I love to give. I love to see people light up, mm-hmm. but I feel like around him, I feel like he gives to me. And so yeah. I'm just like, Oh, <laughs> to see him hurting. I'm just like, Oh, how do I help you? You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
so yeah and that's part of um uh we wanted to tell people is that this is like a harder episode i mean we always get vulnerable and talk about hard things but um yeah he's had some losses around he's lost a child and he's lost his dad and um still in the thick of that and so we just know just giving a heads up that sometimes it may not be the best time for you to listen to to those kinds of conversations and so um just wanted you to know so you can listen at your own own pace yeah yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. and it's i'm just so grateful like coming in today i was like this is going to be a good one because i just Mm -hmm. a different he's a different calmer energy and he was so excited about being on the podcast Mm -hmm. like he was like do i need to bring anything and i was like just you and like Mm -hmm be open he's like Mm -hmm. got it got it like he's ready to be vulnerable and those are the best types of guests you know (laughs) yeah and he was very vulnerable um and i appreciated that i did too yeah yeah something too and i i i want to say like it's very interesting for me right now um (laughs) in some like my mom is getting better and recently uh i spent time with her and i felt like Mm -hmm. i got my mom back yeah you know um but it's weird to listen to someone who's lost their parent and i feel like in some ways i've already lost my mom in in ways Mm -hmm. and so it's like when he's like oh i can't look at pictures or i can't i've thought about i need to like remember her voice and Mm -hmm. it's it's i'm in such a a different kind of grieving yeah grieve the loss of the parent you've had isn't the parent there anymore right you know yeah she's different it's just like remember the guest that had their parent had um alzheimer's Mm -hmm. yeah it's it's like that which i I know like your mom's not there but it's just a different version of them that and so grieving doesn't start once someone dies yeah i mean it can but i think when there's health stuff going on that the grieving will start Mm -hmm. when that the person you don't see who they are they're you know yeah they're not the whole selves anymore and that's that's hard and i hope that this episode and the episodes we've had in the past like mm-hmm. around death mm-hmm. i feel like we've talked about that a lot lately mm-hmm. help you the listener like like i've said in the past too i feel like death of a close loved one just kind of like su- surprises you whether you're expecting it or not yeah. and it's a lot to hold so i hope that these episodes will help you feel not alone yeah just feel seen or understood a little part of whatever you're going through yeah that you're not not alone in it and that's a a really important thing Mm -hmm. that it's good to have people to listen and be there but to have somebody that shares a little bit about their experience and you might resonate with it's helpful exactly yeah i love you so much and i'm so grateful that i saw you today you fill my cup i know i was excited we were, we we're getting to record today me too mm-hmm. i needed it me too mm-hmm. girl <laughs> enjoy the yeah. episode enjoy thanks guys and girls ladies and the- <laughs> i'm born and raised 30 seconds from here really yeah wow North, that's so northfield right over there it's weird, like, everybody who comes on here has some kind of... They either live in this neighborhood... My or, mom, my mom's right over there. My mom's right there. Really? Yeah. It's taking one minute to, to run over there. Where do you live now? Uh, Aubrey Church. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Did you like growing up around here? Yeah, it's, it's the only place they ever lived. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, it was perfect for me. I didn't realize how bad it was. But it was bad, but, like, mm. I didn't know it. That's um, awesome. Oh uh, yeah, it was good. It you was have good. siblings, right? Uh yeah, two. I'm a middle child. I have two brothers. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do y'all get along? Yeah. Hell yeah. Super tight. Never, <sighs> never Yeah, we never fell out or anything. So yeah. Yeah, super tight. What was growing up with them like? Well, my older brother was gone, so uh he was out the house. Uh he's like fifty one, so Oh wow. Yeah. Uh my little brother, um, you know, we we when you're apart, so we, you know, just brothers fought mm-hmm. fought until it was like 12 or 13, and I found out, oh, well, he's my brother. I have to love him. So, mm. uh, yeah, we had, we had fun, though. Like, we had fun. My older brother, he was around. He just didn't live with us. So, uh, yeah, he was, he was the best big brother you can ask for. Still is. Dude, that's the best. Yeah. Siblings are so great. Yeah, yeah. When you, when, 
when they're good. Good siblings. Yeah. 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 Especially yeah. when you get older. Yeah. You know. And life starts happening and you're like, I need someone else that is feeling what I'm feeling. Man, yeah. <laughs> you know? Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> You can do whatever you want. Get naked if you want to. I, I am a nudist, so don't tell me. <gasps> oh, really? Are you kidding? Because no, me too. Yeah, I'm a nudist. But we're not going to do a naked. I didn't tell my girlfriend that we were just <laughs> doing that. So that's yeah, not, darn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you like to be naked? Oh, I love to be naked. Me too. Me too. It feels very fresh. Skinny yeah. dipping is the best feeling. Yes. Skinny so dipping? freeing. Yes. I'm yeah. never skinny dip. I went to where I was supposed to be naked, though. Where we were allowed to be naked. Okay. Like, yeah, Who'd friend. you go with? Me and my girlfriend. Oh. Yeah. She <laughs> likes that too? Mm-mm. Yeah, she just <laughs> goes with me. Yeah. Oh, that's oh. good. <laughs> yeah, it's I fun. like that. Yeah, it's yeah, the best. Mm -hmm. The best. Yeah. I leave the windows open too. I'm like, everybody should be doing this. We all should. Yeah. Yeah. Just accept yourself. Be free. Yes. Be free. Jimmy grew up around here. Really? Yeah. You're right. a unicorn. Right up the street. Yeah. <laughs> Not too many people are from here. I, I know. Trust me, I know. <laughs> well, welcome back to the neighborhood. I am back. Mm -hmm. I am back. Yeah. Jimmy, I'm so happy to have you, and I want you to know mm -hmm. that you're like the first comic we've had who's like material, I feel, is more... I don't know, it's different. Like most... I was telling Melanie before, like a lot of comics are like observational or not really about their life, but your comedy is vulnerable. And I, I, I don't want to say dark, mm -hmm. but how would you describe it? Um, just honest, I guess. I mean, it is dark because I talk about death a lot, but, um, but yeah, I, I, dark is a good description. I mean, that's what it would be. Yeah. It'd be dark. Yeah. It's hard to do that. Well, Oh, uh, I mean, Amber says you do it well. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. I didn't finish that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you do. Yeah. That can be hard that. to do well to talk about those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. From what from what I've learned, you mm -hmm. know, hanging out with comedians, the um to talk about the the darker side of things in a way that still isn't offensive and lets people like laugh where, mm -hmm. where they don't feel like they're being inappropriate for laughing at something. Right. Uh, it seems like that can be hard to do, but it seems like you do that well. Well, yeah, the, the the comics I grew up idolizing, like with Richard Pryor, like he he always talked about himself, you know, and um, and he done it well. Uh, like Corey Holcomb, like they're very honest in their in their jokes, so I just take after them and mm -hmm. do that. Yeah. Nice, I like it. Were you you've been doing comedy for how long? Two and a half years. Okay, yeah. and from the jump, it was like how uh, you do it now. Um, no, I mean. <laughs> I guess you can say that. Um, like the very first time I tried it, like like two minutes on the Kill Tony thing, or one minute on the Kill Tony um, show, it was it was personal. Yeah, the first thing I said was I just left left a funeral. That's the first thing I ever <laughs> said on a mic. Like, what? I just left a funeral, and I literally just my neighbor passed away, mm. and I literally left the funeral and done Kill Tony. Wow. And I spoke about that, yeah. Mm. What yeah. made you go from the funeral to go into a mic? I mean, I was already scheduled to, I wanted to go to Kill Tony anyway. I was going to that, yeah. um, at Zany's, and um, he just happened to die in between my scheduling and going to Zany's. So, and you stuck yeah. with it. You're like, I'm going to the mic. I'm going to the mic. I'm going to speak about this. So, mm. yeah. How'd it go? It was great. It went too well. That's why I stopped. I, I'd done it. I'd done, done it, like, Two or three years prior to me starting comedy again, two and a half years ago. So it went too good that I got scared. And yeah. Will you say more about that? What, what, what helps? Yeah, that it went too good the, that like, it scared the you. Praise and like the clip went viral. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I didn't, I'm not used to that. Still, mm -hmm. I ain't, I don't like it. But um, that's, I'm not going out no more. People recognizing <laughs> me, like I don't know. I didn't like the strangers talking to me. <laughs> and I just said, no, nah, I'm doing it. I, uh, Red Band, he like, um, Said I, he, I reminded him of Dave Chappelle, and I was like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> like, no, oh, so, yeah, I just stopped. Mm -hmm. I was scared. What, what made you start back? Um, man, funny like Thomas Leon like kept pestering me in my DMs. He found me in my DMs. Like he was like, Hey, I seen you on Kill Tony. Are you still doing comedy? I was like, Nope, not doing it. And uh, but he killed like three or four weeks. Just kept trying to get me out. Kept trying to get me out. Mm. And one random day, I went to Cafe Coco just to see like what's going on. And there was nobody in there. Probably like six, seven people. 
And he happened to be in there. I'm walking now. He ran out to grab me. He said, hey, you doing it? I'm like, no, I'm not doing it. And, uh, and he said, complete. I said, so I just, I got on stage and I, I just told two long stories. And that I, night? That night. And I never stopped after that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That means something special when a comic, comics don't do that for a lot of people, yeah. mm. you know? Mm. And to keep after you, mm. like not taking no for an answer. Right, mm-hmm. right. He saw something that I didn't see, I guess. But oh. Yeah, so, yeah, blame Thomas for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we do. <laughs> but you see it now, right? Mm-hmm. But how do you feel about um, being in the spotlight now? Oh, it's still weird. Like, I still don't. Like talking to strangers, but you know, I put on a fake face and say, "Hey, you know, thank you." But um, it's 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 cool, and I know they're doing it because they enjoy what I what I bring to the table. Mm-hmm. You know, so um, it's, I'm fine with it. I gotta live with it. if I want to be successful in it. You gotta get used to it. So I'm okay. Okay. Yeah. Is this what you hope to do to be successful at? Uh, yeah. I mean, anything I, I do, I want to be successful at. But I can mm-hmm. I can tell this if I keep doing what I'm doing, I'm going to be. Yeah. I'm gonna be all right. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be doing just fine. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. That's I. One thing I love about you is mm-hmm. every time I am around you, or even when you're not in the room, the way people speak about you, you're mm-hmm. just so real and vulnerable. And like, <clears throat> I feel, I feel like that when I'm talking to you, and also on your Instagram, the things you share is mm-hmm. just so. You don't have any fear about around being vulnerable, and I think that's really dope. Mm-hmm. Have you always been like that? Mm, I don't think so. I I really don't know. I mean, I've always been open and honest with people, which is why people like me or attracted to me. So I guess so. I guess I guess that's the word you can use, vulnerable. Yeah. I just I just call it like an open book. But um, but yeah, I'm not afraid to talk about you know what's bothering me or what's what I'm in love with. You know, I just I talk about it all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's gonna that's gonna blow up your Instagram for sure. <laughs> 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 well, it's just not something you see all the time mm. the being but what it gives you permission to be vulnerable because that's like one of the things people are most afraid of um i just don't care and I, I i care but it's like you know it's the truth you know what I mean? you can't be afraid of the truth and i'd rather be who i am and that people hate me or love me for that mm. you know i don't really be i want to be fake and you love me and now yeah. i have to keep up being this fake person mm-hmm. so i'm just gonna be me and you can hate it or love it and take mm-hmm. it or leave it i love that yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have you had people like leave it and you'd be and you'd be like bye? <laughs> Mm-mm. I mean, most people like like me. You know Hell I mean? yeah! I'm not an aggressive person. I'm very. If you come to me like you, you was drawn to me. I'm not drawn to you. Like yeah. you gotta come over here. I don't really. I'm not a, <laughs> I don't have an aggressive personality at all. So I'm late. It's like super late back. Sometimes too late back. <laughs> you are yeah. very laid back. Your energy is very gentle. Yeah, mm. and I'm, I'm like that. I appreciate that. I would say. So some people don't. Some people don't like that. Mm. Why do you think some people I mean, don't? It's, it's nonchalant. Like, some people don't, you know, especially, like, with, in dating. Like, mm. you know, I'm not, I'm not aggressive. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can come over. You cannot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like, I like my space. Do you feel so. drawn over here? Come yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, though. That's funny. Mm-hmm. You said that <clears throat> um, in your comedy, you... I don't know if you said like, but you talk about death. Mm. Um, is that just what, uh, that's just so unique to me. Cause I feel like some comics are like, you know, what about airplanes can I write about? Like mm. how does, how does jokes about death come to you? Um, cause they're not jokes. You know what I mean? Like they're just stories. Um, whatever I'm experiencing. I just, I just try to talk about it and, and figure out a way to, to make it, I guess, funny uh, or interesting. It don't have to be funny, but it can be interesting enough to mm-hmm. get a chuckle out of you. But um, but yeah, it's just, it's just it helps me deal with it. I, mm. I know that much. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, just me being open. It's, it's my life. It's what I'm dealing with. So I'm gonna talk about it. Will you will you take us into some of this? Because I don't know, I don't know anything about your story. But um, it seems like there. It's something, death is something you've dealt with mm-hmm. um, quite a, a bit, I would say. Not a lot, just like very impactful. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I talk about, I talk about my, my son. My son passed away mm-hmm. about eight years ago, and uh, I talk about that. And, and my dad passed away a year and a half ago, and I talk about that. So mm-hmm. those are the two, like, you know, that's heavy. That's a, yeah. a little heavy loss. So um, and I usually open up 
um, my sets with that. I start mm-hmm. with with mm-hmm. that and um, just set the tone of what was about to happen. And, but um, yeah, that's just that's that's those are the the, the depths that I've had to live with these last few years. Those have happened in the past few years. Mm-hmm. Actually, my son would have been uh, eight mm-hmm. um, this year, and his and my dad passed last last August. Yeah, that's. Mm-hmm. I think all three of us have lost our dads. Mm-hmm. So it's not a, a fun club to be in. Mm-mm. So um, thank you for sharing that, and I'm sorry you've lost two mm-hmm. important people mm-hmm. um, in your life. How did how does that um, transition? when you're on stage and talking about it, it seems like it's more, you kind of said more storytelling than joking, but then there's some humor in it. Yeah. Um, it's like pretty much a misdirection when I talk about it. Like when my son, like my son was a stillborn. So like I have to, um, I just talk about the, you know, the short time I, you know, got to be, you know, in his with him. Um, and I just talk about the funeral. That's the, only, that's the only thing I can really talk about, mm-hmm. you know, is the funeral of an infant. And I talk about that. And with my dad, you know, I have a million stories I can tell about my dad. Mm-hmm. But um, just, just just talking about the aftermath of of his death and, you know, the things happened, what happened right afterwards mm-hmm. that I tell him on stage is pretty funny mm-hmm. uh, to me and I guess to everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it's just, I just, I just think it's funny and it's, and it's risky. You know, to do that, mm-hmm. you know, in a, in a room, and you know, it's kind of, it's a vibe killer for sure. Like anybody <laughs> that's, you know, coming up after me, and I talk about all that, you know. Uh, well, the person coming up after you could be like, and, um, you know, bringing in some different, you know, energy. energy so. yeah. yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's not easy. I've seen people have a hard time. <laughs> well, I, I would imagine, cause death is an uncomfortable topic for people. Mm-hmm. Like, just to even sit with our own, you know, death and anybody, you know, just the topic in general. People are afraid to even bring it up. They're, I don't want to remind you. Of the loss, you're like, we didn't forget yeah. a promise. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, right. Mm-hmm. And so it's just a, it's a topic in general that people can't be uncomfortable. Like that they're afraid, to, it makes them very uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. But to talk about it in a way it seems to resonate with people, it's, and I've, I see that with a lot of the comedy, the things that where I see, I can see, because I've gotten to know some of you, and mm-hmm. it's fun to then see you performing and I, I know where pieces of your story come into play and when people like laugh along or get it it's I feel like you I would imagine it's like you're being seen like and there's like a support in that in some way if that makes sense mm-hmm. like it resonates with people I mean, everybody's lost somebody in some mm-hmm. form of fashion so yeah it is, it is a, people do resonate with it people come up and say you know I think, thank you for you know mm-hmm. what I mean talking yeah. about that or whatever so yeah or they most people think it's fake you know, well, a lot really? of people think, like, is that really? I'm like, yeah. Like, Why true. would I make that up? <laughs> yeah, like, you know, all right. But, like, you know. It's a certain style of comedy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, I, but every, like, 90% of the things I talk about is, is comes from a very real place. Yeah. 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 I I love to see, I get excited when you go on stage. Because mm. from the from this top, it's like, Jimmy will sit down, and mo- you know, it's just like, and then I like the surprise that people feel of, like, Oh, wow. We're getting, we're being open now. Uh You know, like all of us are in this space. Like, Mm -hmm. it's really cool. Yeah. I I don't know. It says a lot because a lot of comedians have bigger energy and that that's part of the the performance. Mm -hmm. And would you say sometimes it's a part of the performance like you lean on and that's a part of like a, a, you know? Yeah. And for you, it's the being calm and vulnerable is like, it's so unique. Like yeah. I, it really is. Yeah. I just like I like fucking with people. I like like the, <laughs> I like silence. You know what I mean. I like yes. to watch people just be just staring at me with their mouth open. Like, what is he about to say? Like, where is this going? And I take it somewhere they didn't think it was going there. So that I happens just, to me in therapy a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just like fucking with people. That's why I do that. When you so like if you 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 do get laughs, you're very good. But like when you maybe in the beginning or like trying out new stuff that's in that realm about death or whatever. Mm-hmm. And you don't get laughs. Is that your goal to get laughs? Or are you like, I'm just going to tell this story and, <laughs> um, a laugh, like sometimes, sometimes just as long as I keep your attention, I'm okay with that. I don't, silence mm-hmm. doesn't bother me at mm-hmm. all. 
Like I, I have a long like my, my the the bit I end with is like two or three minutes long. It's just silence the whole time. Yeah. You know what I mean? You don't laugh to the last two words I say. So I don't care about the silence. Um, but you know, it's it's I don't I don't need the laugh after after the punchline. Like you're gonna get it. I'm gonna I know when I'm gonna get my laugh after the the third joke where I'm setting it up from the mm-hmm. first. I know that's coming. That's gonna make me laugh every time. So I don't care about how many laughs I get. Is did, did I make you laugh when I wanted to make you laugh? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's fun. So I love that. That's so interesting. Yeah. yeah. What What do you get out of talking about this kind of topics on stage, like your own experiences and the vulnerability? How has it been helpful? It's liberating. Uh, mm-hmm. It's very liberating. Um, I feel more alive when I'm actually talking, because I don't talk about it like nowhere else. Uh, I just talk about it on stage. A lot of stuff I just talk, only talk about it on stage. Really? Yeah. Because um, I'm not really a talkative person. Like, I'm really just quiet most of the time. So, me just doing comedy, people are like, people who know me, like, dude, you do comedy. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I don't, I'm a quiet, reserved person. Uh, but I, I come alive a little bit on stage. You know? <laughs> you know, it's, it's liberating, though, just to talk about, you know, the painful things and to, to put, you know, put some sunshine on it a little bit, just a little bit of sunshine. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Why do you think you only talk about it on stage? Mm, I don't have nobody to really talk about it with that I, that I think deserves it to be talked to, spoke to about it. Um, what, yeah. do you, what do you say more about that? Uh, like my, like my, my, my male friends, like we, we don't, we're not like very vulnerable. We don't talk about, you know, things like that. Um, even like my female friends, like it's now, nah, I've tried to talk to them with therapists. I actually just, um, I go to a grief counselor on Thursday. I found me one. Um, but yeah, I just, I just rather talk about it on stage, like in front of a bunch of strangers. I've always been able to talk to strangers about mm-hmm. anything and then talk to a, a friend about stuff. So that's just how I was. I've always been. Does it feel safer in a way? Yeah, because you don't know me. Like, mm-hmm. y'all don't know me. Can't use it against me. You know, I'm mm-hmm. never, never going to see you. I probably will, but, like, you're not mm-hmm. going to hold it against me. So, yeah, I just rather talk to a stranger. Has it been held against you before? Uh, no, not really. I mean, with my mm-hmm. friends, yeah, that brings some stuff back up. But, like, you know, I just won't tell them no more. I won't tell them nothing else. Mm-hmm. I'm good. I'm good. I have a question about, <clears throat> so on your Instagram, and I think it's like, I think you have, um, for some like just friends. So if you don't want to talk about this, just let me know. But like posting stuff about how like your dad's passing has been really hard on you. Mm-hmm. Um, does it help or like, uh, what do I want to, I want to say, really, I just want to say like, I'm really sorry. Mm-hmm. That really, really fucking sucks. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I see those things, I just want to, I wish I could like care for you in the right way. Mm-hmm. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess what I want to know is like, how can a friend care for you? Like, mm-hmm. Oh, I'm a, I'm hard to care for. Like my girlfriend don't even know how to care for me. Like I just, I deal with it on my own. I just, it's just, you can, words of encouragement, I guess, but like, I'm not listening to it. Like, I deal with it on my own. Um, Do you want to deal with it on your own? Mm, I guess, I guess I do. I think I do. I think I'm, I think it's better that way for me. Um, it's ah. funny, like, the funny story, like, the the day after his, um, um, his, uh, what they call it, before the funeral. The viewing? viewing, yeah, like that same day, I, I did a don't tell with you. That was that was after his viewing, like so I was in real time dealing with this shit. You know what I mean? Uh, the day he died, I went to do comedy just to just to like you know I gotta keep going. I gotta do something. So yeah, that's. I mean, you said that like the audience gives you that that opening or that listening ear that you like, and I feel like. I feel like that is letting someone help you deal with it, you mm-hmm. know? Like, if you're going right after to the comedy, mm-hmm. that's like, mm-hmm. 
I don't know. Yeah. Um, what makes you say that you would rather deal with it on your own? Yeah. Uh, it may be trust issues, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, I, 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 I've always done things on my own. I just grown up. I had siblings, but I, we played separately. Uh, I, I had no problem entertaining myself. I had no problems, you know, going with any, going through anything by myself. I just I know how to navigate it. Um, mm-hmm. It's just how how I am. I like I like being alone. Actually, mm-hmm. like I prefer it. So um, it's just something I do. Does you said your girlfriend doesn't even know how to to mm-hmm. support you? Um, does I would I'm just putting myself in her shoes. That would be hard to see your partner struggling in a way and saying I don't want your help I want to do this by myself like I mean it seems like it's hard for you as a friend to see that you know Mm -hmm. and want to do something how does that play out these are two big things that you deal with it seems like right now um yeah and and it is tough for her because she 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 loves I know she loves me and she wants she wants to be there for me she is she's there you know but just I'm not I'm just not going to sit and I just talk you know um she wouldn't understand. Like I talk to like my brothers when we do talk, because they understand one thousand mm-hmm. percent. Yeah. So I, it's hard for me to talk to somebody who doesn't understand one thousand percent. And she's a therapist as well. And it's and it's, it's funny. Like I have it right there, but like it's like. I'm like, <laughs> come on. But, That's um, really hard for her now. <laughs> but uh, oh. um, but it's just you know I just I was. Rather than I just, just, just sit and be quiet and just deal with it on my own or just talk about it on stage. Mm. Mm. You don't feel like you're being like a burden if you talk about it with someone. Mm-mm. Oh, okay. No, no, no. I know my my friends love me and they and I feel like they would listen, but they don't have the tools to help me. You can't help me lose my father. Like it's literally nothing you can do. Mm. You know, so but that's that's really not the goal is to do something. I mean, that's grief is just a totally different thing to deal with mm-hmm. like out of all the different things you go to therapy for i think grief is just something that just is in a thing all by itself mm-hmm. and i was a therapist for years until i experienced it and you really there is the aspect you can't understand unless it's something you've experienced mm-hmm. but it doesn't mean you can't try to understand and be helpful yeah. you know um other people that haven't experienced it but it's um it is a it's just a thing you don't know unless you have, mm-hmm. you know, unless you've experienced that. And is that, do you think what, because you said your siblings, you know, mm-hmm. I've said this before, but I'm like, they're the only two people in the world that could possibly understand my experience in, mm-hmm. in the exact way, that, you know. Right. And even then, we experience it differently. Right. Um, is, is that kind of what you were kind of getting yeah. at when you were like, yeah. no one can really help me? Yeah. Um, I like how you worded no one can help me lose my father because mm-hmm. it, it is like an active of the mourning mm-hmm. and grieving. It is like you have to go through the loss. Mm-hmm. And so it sounds very present tense still mm-hmm. of like, I'm losing my father. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. Yeah. It still feels like it just happened. So yeah, it's tough. What's coming up for you right now? Oh, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm home. I'm right up the street. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I used to ride my bike to this. I used to be a corner store right here where this the new uh, uh, apartment building is that we just drive down to, or ride our bikes to. So, mm-hmm. like, I'm just here now. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, we used to ride up and down the street on our bikes. It's so. a lot of memories. Yeah. 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 Does it bring up sadness? Um, I mean, yeah, it's always just sadness. I try to find. Even when I'm happy, I have like a because all my moments with him was was good moments. So mm-hmm. it's still just sad. Like wow, like you know, I can't, I can't, um, I can't do that no more. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I can't hang with my dad. So yeah. Did you? Do we all? You were close and talked about all the time. Yeah, that was that was you know, my, my literally my best friend. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, he would call every day. We mm-hmm. talked every day, and for a moment, like, like like me and my brother, we all have different experiences um mm-hmm. for a short time like my mom had they had split up and she went and bought another house and so my little brother went with her and i stayed with my dad mm-hmm. like i was a daddy's boy um hell, even when, as, as children like they had two beds they slept in two separate beds all the time which is i recommend and <laughs> um 
<laughs> so it, it, I, and I always slept with my dad, and, mm. and he slept. So I was always drawn like, mm. to my dad. Um, so it's just, it's just different. It's not. It's, it was, it's just um, muscle memory. Just calling them when something good happens. That's a that was gut wrenching. Mm. Every time that happens, it just ugh, it just feels mm. like he got punched in the gut. Yeah. 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 Only thing. Um, like with, with, with comedy, like I just wanted, I wanted him to see me do comedy, mm-hmm. and he never got a chance to see me do comedy. Mm-hmm. Uh-uh. So that's the that's the one thing that that kind of always fucks with me that he never got to see me do. It. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, so, yeah. That's hard. Yep. Yes, it is. Do you? How do you? This may seem like a weird question, but everybody experiences grief different Mm. and like how do you I I know you've shared a little bit but the question how do you experience and move through grief and I know you said like things you do externally by talking and going on stage but I'm curious more internally how that feels for you if that makes sense I just been running from it to be honest with you Mm -hmm. Like I just been busy. Like, mm-hmm. um, like I said, as soon as he, you know, he passed away, I just running, 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 mm-hmm. and um, it's like the universe to say, "Hey, stay busy." I probably read that wrong, but <laughs> um, I just I've been busy like nonstop, like nonstop. I haven't I haven't had time to um, sit and and just you know. I remember one time I knew I had to. Um, I did some shrooms and I just I, I just sat in the room. I had pictures and videos of him. I just sat there and I just cried like mm-hmm. the whole night. I knew I needed to because I haven't had that moment, mm-hmm. and, uh, so I had to I had to let it out. But even that wasn't enough. So I probably need to do that a few more times. Yeah. Well, you're that's good that you've like I work with psychedelic mess, and that's I think it is a, it's a way that I move through some of it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was going through that, but um, a couple things while you were talking was, do you, you haven't slowed down and you've kept going mm-hmm. with talking about it to other people. Does it feel like you have to slow down and talk about it if you let anybody else in besides it's on your terms when you talk about it mm-hmm. and you, it's like a one way thing where no one can come talk to you back <laughs> about it. Right. Mm-hmm. And do, does that feel like does that resonate at all? Where you think you're you're just staying busy and it, it's and not letting anybody else in. Although you said you just reached out to a grief counselor. Yeah, yeah. At a moment, a couple of days ago, I was like, I'm fucked up. I need mm. to I need to try to figure out new ways to process it. So, yeah. Will you tell me about that moment? Um, I don't know. I was I was at work and um, basically it was just. I never, I, anytime I did something good or, or, or something good happened in my life, just call him. Mm. And, like, it, it just fuck, it was just fucking with me. Like, I can't call him. I can't tell him that I, you know, I'm in Zanies. You know what I mean? Like, we mm-hmm. used to go to Zanies. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just, that's my brother calling me now. It's crazy. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so it, it's, 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 um, I, it, it, that that was really it was really bothering me that I couldn't talk to him and tell him, you know, what like what I'm because he was my biggest cheerleader, mm-hmm. like yeah, you know, um, and he would tell the world, everybody, he would tell everybody, uh, you know, what I had going on or what his sons had going on. So, you know, losing that 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 cheerleader, you know, it just it just fucks with me sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big hole mm-hmm. there now. It's a it's a huge hole. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when I, I I go to my parents' house sometime, I just I lay in the bed. I lay in his bed um, mm-hmm. just to you know I can still smell him. Mm-hmm. You know, so um, that but it's I don't I don't go over there often because it's too. A lot. It just feels so fucking weird. And it's just my mom. I know I need to go over there a whole lot more, but it's like when I used to go over there, it was it was during the day, and my mom would be at work, and he's he he was being retired for so long, he was always home, and uh, just going over there just to share a laugh. Like 
it wasn't a day that went by that, that my dad didn't make me laugh. He made me laugh mm-hmm. harder than anybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, you know, he was the first comedian, and if he was him, and then my brother, we all funny, mm-hmm. but like, um, mm-hmm. you know, it's just just missing, missing him making me laugh and me making him laugh. Yeah. yeah. What was his humor like? Um, it's like mine, but like off stage, if you see me talk to my homeboys, you see a different me. Like I'm not. It's, my stage persona is like it's 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 a it's me, but it's a character also. Like my friends have never seen that side of me. Mm. Um, so I'm performing. Like this is this is a performance. Um, but uh, but yeah, he he was just he said what <laughs> said what he wanted to say. It was it, it, he spoke his mind. Uh, um, brutally honest and. He liked fucking with people, you know. So, but <laughs> he didn't take no shit either. So he was, he was, you know. But yeah, he was a funny, a funny, funny, funny person. The life of the party is what we went. He was the life of the party. Mm. Um, and now, you know, him and my really, we are everywhere we go amongst our groups. We're the life of the party. So that's just how it was. Mm. It's <clears throat> it's so much emotion and such a big thing for the body to hold that feeling that I feel like we're that we're never like really prepped for mm-hmm. but like I don't know I guess because humans just don't talk about it but like you talking about losing your cheerleader like I feel that with my mom like she's still present but like uh not as full mentally and it's I don't know it's such a it's such a big fuck in your body and it's like you feel kind of lost and want like i i i walk to the coffee shop down the street every day and i would always talk call my dad on those walks and we would talk about stuff and you just kind of feel lost like you're not really (laughs) sure what you're doing i remember the first you know three months of that you're just the world feels gray and you just aren't really Mm -hmm. sure what you're doing in it and that you can that i can't call i can't Mm -hmm. tell him things and yeah you do just feel like this you're like where am i in this world where am i latched down or you know attached anywhere and you just feel so unhinged like at least i did yeah i was just kind of floundering around for a little bit and just the world didn't make sense yeah because that person wasn't in it anymore I kind of feel pissed sometimes too because i'm like no one fucking told me this was going to happen like my plan was like my mom was going to be up there up until the end like Mm -hmm why weren't we talking why didn't no one tell me this was gonna fucking hurt so bad Mm -hmm. and then like walking to the coffee shop people are still like cutting you off or saying (laughs) hi and you're just like everything feels like a movie or something it's yeah every day it does feel like some slow motion stuff you're like why do you care about this don't (laughs) you know that somebody just died (laughs) yeah you know and I, i don't i just remember life didn't have a lot of important meaning for me for a while because that just felt like it that was just the main that was what was important was like this person's not here mm-hmm. it was hard to care about anything <laughs> you yeah know, it seemed everything seemed less significant right i think like your dad's your dad has been passed away for like a year and a half mm-hmm. and i know you've gone through like shifts and grief mm-hmm. have you seen your grief like shift from when it first happened to now uh, I, I think so. I mean, I guess now is I'm 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 feeling it more than I've felt. Period. Mm. Uh, for some odd reason, but uh, how long ago was it again? He, last August, he died last August. Uh, so it's just I don't know what it is, but I just you know because I don't know I don't know why it just is it's heavy right now. Yeah, it's, it's it's just heavy right now. Mm-hmm. Well, you haven't been a year yet. It sounds like you mm. said it right. No, last or, August. Okay. Not yeah, 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 okay. yeah. Year and a half. Yeah. Year and a half. Yeah. Has it um when he passed, like being a dad, did that like did you think about having kids differently, or like your relationship with them? Did you see it differently? Um. No, like even prior to him passing, I was having issues with with my co-parent and um, like just not seeing my my daughters as often as as I need to. So like you know, I was, I'm grieving that as well. You know, mm-hmm. I've had I've had you know legal issues dealing with her and dealing with, with that situation. So 
um, to when my dad passed. Like my dad was sick, you know, so I, we, me and my brothers and my mom, we was taking care of him for the last four or five months. So, you know, he'd be the last two months, like every day, you know, we with him. So I didn't care about nothing else. Like I'm just, this is my daddy. Like mm. I'm gonna be right there to the, to the last day. So, um, and then it doesn't really matter. You know? Work didn't matter. I didn't care about. It. I didn't. I was. I stopped calling out for a little. Bit. I just didn't show up. Yeah. But they knew what was going on. But it was like I'm not. I'm gonna be with my daddy. So I don't mm-hmm. care about this. Yeah. yeah. I know the mushrooms and sitting with him helped, and I know you took psychedelics. How? What do you guys think is a way to pause? Um, in in like a throughout the day in a more you know what I'm saying instead of being like okay I'm going to take a day for mushrooms and stuff like what does that look like just crying when you feel like crying and then popping back into work or like I think it's different for everybody but how have you um like I said when I did that I was just home laying in the bed I made I made sure my family was gone for a while because I told them I was like I need I need some I need some time like it worked, you know. I'm I'm a mailman, so I'm out there by myself anyway. So I can cry the whole damn day, and nobody <laughs> yeah. would know that I was crying all day. So and that's pretty much what happened the other day. So just crying and just delivering mail, mm. you know, <laughs> listening to a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. but it sounds very human. Yeah, very right. Human of you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I feel like I had to. It's kind of like when I go through this through something, it's like. I make it my job to like, let's get through this. Let's go through this healing. And I just, I know the ways I have to go through things. Mm -hmm. And it is some, it's, there's no like, here's the big secret, you know, (laughs) how to go through this. It really is just, the more you try to hold it in, the longer it'll be there. Yeah. I feel, Mm -hmm. I feel dangerous right now. I just, just, if anybody was to mess with me on this, every day's the wrong day, but like, you know, it's going to be, it's going to go bad. So I, I'm scared of that, um, just clicking. Because I've always had the best temperament. I, I pride myself in having a good temper. But, like, yeah, it's just, I know I can feel it. Like, if somebody wrongs me, it's, it's going to go left real fast. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I experienced that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a guy doing lawn, like lawn mower stuff, and he had his truck blocking to where I couldn't get to my house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and normally I'd just back up, but I just laid on my horn <laughs> until he like, it was like, no, <laughs> do I? I don't do that. <laughs> well, I could like looking back, I'm like that was. I'm like, I hope I run into that guy so I could just tell him, I'm sorry my dad died. I was not myself. Yeah. But just, yeah, it just, but there would be t- I'd be folding laundry and then I would just break down crying, you know? Mm-hmm. Or my dad always taught me how to be handy, like around the house and stuff, and I was trying to fix something, and I normally would have called him and asked him, you know, how to do something, and then so I just sat on the floor and cried for an hour. Like there was a lot of moments, and I think just letting – letting the waves come mm-hmm. and it's just going to feel like you're getting pummeled wave after wave at first, but they, they get slower. They come less often and there'll be anniversaries of things mm. and, and events that the waves feel bigger, but they don't feel like they're just crashing in on you, which it sounds like that's how you're feeling right now mm-hmm. is that they're coming hard and fast. Mm-hmm. Um, Pause. Yeah. 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 And it's just giving yourself room. Yeah. To you, you can't, you know, I get tired of hearing the saying, but the only way is to feel through something. You can't like think your way or escape around something. Like if you find a way to numb it out, it'll just be there when you quit numbing. Mm. And so it's, I think doing a, to me, I, I want to be careful with this. I, w- I was about to say you're doing yourself a disservice mm. to not feel things. I think I went through a phase where I just felt numb to everything. I didn't feel happy. I didn't feel, I didn't feel anything, but grief is a different thing. And so I don't think you need to force yourself by any means to, to feel anything. It's just letting it come when it, when it does. And it's, I've said before, when it comes to grieving, you get to do whatever you need to do as long as you don't hurt yourself or somebody else. Mm-hmm. Like it does whatever it needs to look like, and if that means doing things to purposely 
numb out and have a pause. Whatever that looks like. If it looks like psychedelics or going to therapy or whatever, yeah. like, do it, mm-hmm. you know? Because it is a pretty solo thing. Even if someone's like, yeah, my dad passed away too. Yeah. I get you. Mm-hmm. Inside, you're like, you don't, though, because no. you didn't know him. Yeah. You don't know all these memories I have and what I'm feeling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, it really is a you got to mm-hmm. find your own. It's like find, <clears throat> knowing other people that have lost. My sister-in-law lost her dad in, like, years before, but it was somebody I knew she understood to mm-hmm. to a degree. and. I could ask her and I could break down mm. with her because um, I just remember being like, does this ever stop? I feel like I'm going crazy. Mm. Like I just cannot think outside of my head. And having someone that has experienced it to talk to or, or a therapist or a group, like grief group, like mm. having that around you can be really helpful. It was, I know for me, of like having that piece of feeling understood. Mm. I think that's a, a human need we have. and especially around the hardest things we are going through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How's the grief? Uh, have you been to the counselor? Grief no, counselor? I go Thursday. That's how I him today. And I go uh, Thursday. What are you feeling about it? I, I don't know. I don't, I mm-hmm. just, we're going to see. Uh, I just want to, I just want to try whatever I need to try to try to, you know, mm-hmm. do it, a help, do it a healthy way. Mm-hmm. Like, I yeah. don't want to end up hurt. People can grieve themselves to death. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And um, so I just want to, I want to do it, do it, try to do it the, um, a healthier way. It may not be the right way, but just try to just do it away. Yeah, there's not a right way, but I would say, like, uh, sometimes we encourage, like, whatever you resonate with doing, like, some people's like, let's do art to, it's like, how do you get what's in here out? Mm-hmm. And that can look like crying or talking, doing comedy, mm-hmm. right? And grief, there is, like, I know we said that, there's no... There's nothing to solve about it. You can't change it. It's And a lot of times grief is, at least in the work I've done, is meeting them where they are, but then it's telling stories. I talked about my dad so much. Mm. I still do, but, like, telling stories mm. just feels good, and that's a lot of the a lot of grief work is just looking at pictures and mm. telling stories and, I don't know. That can be. I can't look at pictures. I try not to. Like I see, I go. I scroll past them fast. Even with my son, I still I go Mm. past it because I just I I sometimes don't have the time. Like I don't have time to do this right now. Like no, that and that's give that to yourself. Mm. I I will say like there was a long time for that for me of not being able to. You see the picture and it jars you, Mm. and there'll come a day where you see it and it makes you smile. Mm. Yeah. And it might catch you on another day and you'll still get a reaction from it, but then you'll smile. Yeah, I smile and cry at the same time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, a lot of good times, a lot of good times. Mm-hmm. What a hard thing about being human, man. That shit mm-hmm. sucks. It sucks. <laughs> my, like my brother, I always said, my older brother, he said, man, it's, it's, it's just our turn. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we all, we all got to you know, go through it, or some type of loss, but like, you know, to lose a that person, you know, mm-hmm. a mom or, or a dad, like, that's something you just don't know what the, what the, um, how you're going to feel after that. Mm-hmm. Well, it's been like your reference for the world that you're in, you know, that you've come to know and be in, and especially if it was a parent that was like in your everyday world. Mm-hmm. Um, it's you, it's like your world gets split into before and after when things like that happen. Mm-hmm. And you like, have, if you, especially if he's been a person that helped you navigate an after, you know, when something has happened and then they're not here. It's, yeah, yeah. you kind of have to, you have to figure out another way. And it's, it's not fair and it's sad. Yeah. I just don't, I just, I guess I, he was my handyman. So, you know, uh, <laughs> it, it, I just don't fix shit. Now, I won't get nothing fixed. Like, I just, I'm not going to fix it. Like, it is what it is. Uh, I need new tires now, and I'm not, I'm not going to even go. Because I would call him, like, hey, can you call such and such? Let him know I'm about to come up there. Like, his, all, he was very resourceful. Like, he knew everybody. Mm-hmm. And um, so, you know, that's why I'm just, I'm scared to even get in any type of trouble because hmm. that was my, 
man, get out of jail free card. Is calling <laughs> my dad, and he knew judges and he knew <laughs> lawyers and everything. So it's like now I gotta just can't have no accidents at all because <laughs> um, I don't know who I'm gonna call. Will you kind of take us into your mindset when you said you don't want to like fix something or get new tires? Uh, I mean, just it's just. I don't. I don't know. I know who to call, but like I always go through him. And but what does it bring it, up? It's for the you? memories. Like yeah. now, if I go back to to Bridgestone or Firestone, I like, oh shit, my dad used to always come pick me up. Mm. Um, I, I didn't. I didn't travel um, for a few years. I, I used to travel every other month. Mm -hmm. But after he died, I was like, man, I don't want to, because he was the person who picked me up from the airport. He was the person who took me to the airport, and. So it was just weird when I went uh, this August, went to Denver, just taking a, getting an Uber and getting dropped off and having an Uber pick me. Like it was just, it was just weird. I used to enjoy those conversations on the way mm -hmm. to the airport. Well, pick me. Like it was just, um, it's just those little things like that. Like I don't even want to fly out and have fun no more because he's not going to be there. To, when I land, hey dad, I made it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I always call my parents when I land, and it's just, it's just shit like that. Just always. Um, just reminds me, like, damn, he's not here. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. but um, I always try to take him with. Me. Like, I, I got, I got one of his watches that I sometimes wear on stage. It mm -hmm. don't even work. It's just mm -hmm. a watch, and um, that he used to wear. He's worn before. He had a lot of watches, but um, mm -hmm. so I take that. I travel wherever I go. I take it with me. Um, I do the same thing with my son. He had a, we had um, we had bought uh, some pajamas for him, and uh, he wore it, you know, um, for like a couple of hours and. So his hat, like I have his hat that I, when I travel, I take his hat with me. Mm -hmm. uh, even when I go to court, like hell, I gotta take, you know, I gotta take this hat. It's my good luck hat, you know. So, um, but uh, but yeah, I was trying to court a lot. Man, dealing with what I'm dealing with, I was <laughs> going to court a lot. Like they know me down there at the court. <laughs> but um, um, but yeah, I always, you know, keep them close when I have mm -hmm. like big moments. Mm -hmm. Kind of yeah. calm me down. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's nice. Yeah. What was your dad's name? Jimmy. Jimmy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, yep. So it, it's uh. So when y'all call me Jimmy, that's not my that's not my government name. So I just I get to hear his name all the time now. Oh, I love that. Oh. You know I mean? Is that yeah. why when you were like, oh no, la like no, when stage there's like no last name, just Jimmy. Just Jimmy. Oh. It's Jimmy. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. yeah. That's it's a good way to honor him. Yeah. Yeah, he knew he knew my stage name was Jimmy too. He knew that he just wasn't um, well enough to actually physically come mm -hmm. come see me. Before. My mom came to see me during that time. She's seen me a few times now, but um, she came when you were at Zany's the first time. Yeah, I was her was the first time seeing me. I was right up the street at this coffee shop. But like the Zany's, that was her first time hearing me talk about what I would talk about. Wow. Yeah, she never heard me talk no my whole family was there like the whole entire family and that was your zany's debut mm -hmm. first time they've seen you you <laughs> you're so dope that's yeah. amazing yeah, yeah, yeah. what did uh what did your mom say in in the video you can just hear her laughing the whole time <laughs> like i know my mom's laugh i know my brother's laugh you can hear the like very hearty laughs <laughs> so, like, they all you know i'm always i've always been funny but like yeah. to, to get on stage and you know, I had Brad behind me with the piano, so it's like <laughs> it was like a real performance, and um, yeah, it was that was a that was a beautiful night. That was a beautiful night. People were talking about that mm -hmm. for like weeks after comics mm -hmm. and circles. They were like, "Did you get to see that? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. them two together, you and Brad together? Mm -hmm. Um, this guy just like plays a piano, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what's one of your favorite stories about your dad? I so many damn stories. That's just that's just that's so hard to <laughs> to um it's that's 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 hard to even pick one. Mm. Um a funny one that I think is I kinda of put on social media a little bit. He um it was just weed, he he just liked smoking weed. And um I gave him this weed called uh, Moon Rocks. You ever heard of Moon Rocks? It's mm. like it was just powerful. Um, <laughs> Sounds I, powerful. Yeah, I gave him, I gave him some pre rolls, and I, have, he had, I think I was in LA at the time. He dropped me off, and on my way back, he picked me up. He said, "Man, I gave one of those moon rocks to to um, one of his friends, <laughs> and and um, they smoked and they had passed out and fell off the 
fell off the porch. <laughs> he had it all on camera. So when, when we got back to the house, um, <laughs> he showed me, and like we had the like the hardest laugh <laughs> in the world. Damn. Like I got it on video. I show you like. <laughs> That, sh- like, that poor man. That was the best like laugh I ever had in my life. He, he got it on a security camera. Yeah. His friend. Yeah. Oh, security so camera funny. footage is even better than just like a phone video, right? It was so funny. Like, From just weed. It, I mean, it, it was, it was, it was, it was strong. Video right here. Oh yeah. Okay. Like, that shit is so. <laughs> you just hear me laughing. <laughs> no. <laughs> Is that your dad? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> he goes my head first and dad's pulled him out. Is that like you? <laughs> oh I have to <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh, he's like, where am I? <laughs> Yeah, that is crazy. beautiful. <laughs> that was what funny. a treat. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, that was, that was, that was mm. it. We always, yeah, love to laugh. That's what we did. I love that. Mm-hmm. That's what we did. I love that, that your whole family shares that being funny. Like, mm-hmm. that's so nice, you know? Yeah. Sometimes yeah. people got a boring family. and Mine is far from it. <laughs> we all we're funny. Your mom's funny too. Mom was hilarious, Let's but go. she's she's like the, this laid back reserve. I get that from her. Like my dad oh. was not laid back at all. Like he was he was <laughs> not, he was not that. But I get all this. The calmness is from my mom. Mm. Like yeah, she's a calm sweet lady, mm. but she's funny as hell. Uh, mm. She don't say a lot of words either. So it's just like me on stage. Like I'm not. I don't <laughs> use a lot of words. But the ones uh, you do are like yeah yeah. yeah but I, I get that from my mom. Oh, yeah. I love that so much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And your dad was more of a performer type? Yeah, he was he was he was animated. Mm-hmm. Like he was animated. He was a, <laughs> he was a character. Like yeah, and just his whole life I guess cuz some of his old friends they all have the same crazy stories. Like he was always I got I found a picture um just digging through his shit and he, <laughs> he was a truck driver. He worked for PIE and he worked for Consolidated Freightways. So he drove trucks across the country, 18 wheelers. And um it's a picture of him working on a dock, and he, he's mooning the fucking camera. Stop. Yeah, I was like. That is, um, <laughs> yes. Like, he's just always been, <laughs> like, crazy. So, yeah. Mm. So, I got it honest, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Two questions. One, what do you do for yourself where you're like, oh, this is my shit? What do you mean? When you're just like, like, some people will get their nails done, or some people go on a walk. Oh, um. I just like being like in the woods, walking around. Like, that's my. That's why I feel more alive than anything. Mm-hmm. Just long walks in nature. Yeah. Uh, or playing Call of Duty. One or two. <laughs> oh, those are two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One is very stressful. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just like the teamwork of it. I like playing oh. in teams. So Aww. yeah, yeah. So that's it. That's so but sweet. Like, you being by myself in the woods or playing teams with strangers across the country. <laughs> the thing of strangers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Damn, that's like ultimate team. You're like Yeah, you gotta trust somebody you don't know. Yeah. yeah. But most people you can't trust. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Look at you. Look. That's <laughs> interesting you say that. <laughs> Cuz earlier you said trust issues. With uh-huh. trust with with me and my feelings, but like when I can trust you, you won't let this person kill me. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do that. I can trust you in my life, but not my feelings. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. I I want to ask why. I don't know. I just I feel like, you know, you get your feelings hurt by a lot of people. But it's not a lot of people that's going to try to hurt your life. You know what I mean? Try to take mm. your life. So I just, I trust a lot of people in my life. But you're not going to get my feelings. Have you had someone hurt your feelings really bad? Mm. <laughs> not, Melanie's face. Not, <laughs> no, no, not, 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 mm. not really. <laughs> <laughs> not like, a, not like, her, uh, no. Share that with your therapist on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> See what she says. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, so I don't think so. Though. Not really. Hurt. It's hard to. I mean, because 
Mm, it's hard. Kind of hard to hurt my feelings. Actually, kind of hard to. I don't care. <laughs> I mean, like going through it with an ex is something. Is I feel like that will hurt your feelings. I and mean, I go through it, but it's not. It's not a. It's just. <laughs> I can't even talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't bother me that I can't talk about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can't, can't legally talk about it. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> there's so I I feel like we need a Jimmy part too because there's something in there that I'm like I want to know. <laughs> this is where the therapy session would start. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Speaking of, I know like if you're ever looking for a therapist, mm-hmm. I know you got the grief counselor, but. Melanie's places, I go there. A lot of other comics <laughs> leave here and go there. <laughs> um, but they're just so good with like everything. Trauma work. It's not just like well, I I don't wanna I don't wanna explain because it's your own experience. Mm. But everybody that is there is awesome. So if you're ever like, man, I would love just like a one on one person that I could tell everything to mm. that's not just it's a good research specific. Yeah. Um, well, the reason I even started comedy because this lady, our therapist, used to laugh at all my shit. So I stopped going to her because she was taking me serious. Yeah. So, that's yeah. annoying, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I didn't like that. I yep. didn't like that. That's but. why you, you're not supposed to laugh at the things <laughs> your clients say. Yeah. A thousand percent. Yeah. But mm-hmm. it's, it happened too many times. So. Mm. Well, I trust. Everybody at Melanie's, like, mm-hmm. I think I can make them laugh. Stop. It. I can make them laugh. Some other comedian has been on here and said that about yeah. mm-hmm. therapists. Yeah. Yeah. Are you kidding? Listen, I got some wild, like, wild stuff. That you, yeah. Do you want to make them laugh? No. It's not a, it's, it's just me. I'm just telling you exactly what happened. And it's just like, oh, that, like, yeah. So they chuckle. But I mean, mm. dead serious. I don't like the chuckles. Don't chuckle. I think that's something. Part of it of mm-hmm. like being vulnerable when you're about feelings, being vulnerable and being like, this is really serious for me. And then someone laughing. I do that like <laughs> on stage. Um, I, I talked, I was speaking about my son, my three year old son, and somebody laughed. It was one person laughed, mm-hmm. like in Zanies, and I was like, that's not funny. And everybody started laughing. So it was like, that's just something I do now. And I don't want you to say that's not funny. Mm-hmm. And, and but that gets people riled up. So. This is the thing I do. You're like, you're going to laugh when I say it too, damn yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm in control right now. So. I'm with the mic. Yeah, that's interesting. Did you mean it when you said that's not funny? Uh, it, it wasn't funny, what I said. Mm. and But I knew the reaction was going to I knew what was going to happen. You so, knew they were going to laugh? Yeah, yeah. It's like, I interesting. Made, yeah, I mean, it's still a job I got to do. I'm getting paid. So <laughs> I got to make people laugh. What? Yeah. <laughs> You got to stay for a whole nother hour, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's just, it's, it's on, it's a lot of stuff is on purpose. Like, it's like we, we're performers. We're paid entertainers. So I got to do my job. I want to say something to the, the laughing thing in, mm. in therapy. It's kind of like, I think it seems like for comedians, it's like a double edged sword because it's something you use to, try to move through something hard yourself is to laugh but then to have someone laugh at something vulnerable it's like it it gives you that message of like they're not it's they not ca- serious they can't handle this or yeah they're not taking it seriously mm-hmm. you know? sometimes, sometimes it's a it's a um it's a nervous laughter mm. you know they 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 didn't know what to feel so it just came out as a laugh yeah laughter is a, a like a natural trauma response mm-hmm. to things when you don't know. Like if you've ever been to the chiropractor and they like crack your something and you laugh, mm-hmm. it's cause you don't know, like it's an automatic response. And so I learned this, I mean, very on of no, like noticing people will tell you like these really hard things and they're, they're just telling you like they're telling you what they had for lunch or they're laughing as they're talking about it. And I mean, that's what you, to laugh with it, you're agreeing with like they have this internal thing going on around, mm-hmm. you know, of like don't pay attention to this isn't serious or you know it's a coping thing. Yeah, and for for a therapist or someone that you trust with your feelings mm-hmm. to kind of laugh, you're kind of a part of you is getting this like, well, they just don't really care or this doesn't feel they can't hold this. Can't trust them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have had that feeling where I'm like, oh, you're just, because a lot of people, just normal people, 
will come up after shows. I don't know if you experience this, but like try to be funny, <laughs> you know, and you're like, no, I know you want to like mm. go on stage if you want to be funny. Like you can't just mm. open mic to my face, you know? <laughs> And that's what I feel like when therapists. I can't imagine. That. It's the worst. It's the worst. <laughs> and you're trying to be nice. It's like, <laughs> but when therapists try to make a joke about something, you're there to for healing. You're there to unload some heavy shit. This isn't the time for us to be friends. Mm -hmm. So, like, having a therapist that, I don't know, what do you do? Hold it in because you know some shit is funny. I mean, if something's really funny, I'll laugh. You know, but there's a. I can tell when someone's just saying something funny and they are they're masking their pain. Mm. They don't laugh at their pain. Like I'll point out why are you laughing at your pain? Yeah. Well, I know when she laughed, it was like my my girl my ex girlfriend. She had like poured KY jelly on my head because uh, she had found something. Like I was it was my cheat my cheat kit, and um, she found it and then she busted in the bathroom and I was using the restroom and she poured KY jelly on my head and like. She chuckled from that, and I can see that's that's a little strange to 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 have done to you, but it's what happened. Like mm -hmm. I was attacked. It's not that, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah, um, but yeah, that's, that's that was my last time seeing her. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that makes sense. That's what sucks too, because therapy can be so fucking great, mm -hmm. and then you open up to someone and. I don't know. It takes a lot to be like, let me go tell someone else my story and trust mm -hmm. someone again. Yeah. And therapists are human too. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. and that therapist I'm sure didn't understand what laughing at that would do and how that came across. And so it's not your job to teach a therapist, but I hope that you would be straightforward. I always hope that and give permission for my clients. Like if I ever say anything that is not helpful and is hurtful, Please, I, I want to know it'll help me be a better therapist for you. Mm -hmm. And again, it's not their job to do that for me, but I always want that that safety to be there that you can. It, it's a relationship you build that you can say, "Hey, that this is how that feels." Mm -hmm. Like, let your therapy space be where you can play out some things. Maybe you wouldn't be able to do. You know, you, you're used to if someone laughs at something that doesn't feel supportive you kind of just, okay, I'm done. Mm -hmm. I hope if, cause I guarantee you, you're going to bring your comedy part of this into your grief counseling. And if they laugh, like hopefully that's not going to happen, but I hope you mm -hmm. maybe can say, Hey, this is how that feels for me mm -hmm. and get yeah. a different experience. Yeah. Let me see. How it go. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what this big is. I've never, I never even thought about grief counseling. I'm just now thinking about it. Uh, like, let me just try this shit. I don't, I'm not, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. So. I'm um, glad you're giving it a try. Me too. Yeah. yeah I got to do something. Mm -hmm. I got to do something other than, yeah, I just feel dangerous right now. So, yeah, I need to do something. Will you, will you say more about that? That's the second time you've said I feel dangerous. Like, I just know. Like, I'm, 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 uh, like, on that right day or the wrong day, you know, if, if, if. if Somebody I know who, who owes me something, owes me some money, and I'd see him, and I just, you know what, I'm just going to click out. Um, I mean, just, you know, just black out or whatever. But um, like, I said, like you said, you feel angry. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel angry more so than I feel sad uh, that, you know, it's just, when it happened, I just thought it was like, hey, we had more time. Mm -hmm. Or we could have done something else. Yeah. Um the treatment could have been different. I'm just angry. It's so, it's so many people I can find a reason to hurt. Mm -hmm. Like, damn, you know what I mean? Like, like you done something wrong, mm -hmm. and you took time, you took them away from me. So, mm -hmm. um, but it's just pent up in me. I just know, and that's why I get quiet. Like when I'm if I'm getting into an argument with my with my girlfriend, I just I usually just, just get quiet. Mm -hmm. like I just I'm, you know I don't argue with my ex no more because I know. Like, it's going to go left because she knows how to press those buttons more than anybody. Mm -hmm. She knows exactly what to press. And so I'm just not going to talk to you because I'm going to allow you to press them. And, you know, it's just going to go left. But, uh, yeah, I just, you know, luckily nobody's, like, bothered me or played with me since since then. Um, and I hope, you know, I'm healed enough to, to be able to let that roll off my shoulders. It's just not that important. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, it's just... Um, I 
I think anger is easier to feel than all the other stuff sometimes for people mm. to where it's let yourself feel that anger and express it in ways that can feel safe and comfortable for you. But yeah. I think it'll, it makes sense. That's what's at the surface right now. Yeah. 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 It sucks. Yeah. That's a, a big and mature step to be like, I'm going to go to mm-hmm. counseling instead of mm-hmm. just being a, you know, letting it harm you mm-hmm. or harm someone else. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah counseling. I, I'm glad I, I, I was doing therapy with, uh, about six, seven, eight years ago is when I first started doing therapy. So it's not, it's not new to me. I know there's a lot of people who've never gone, especially my age and, and, and we're just black people, period. We don't typically go. My dad was anti therapy. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm going to go talk to them crazy people. I'm like, <laughs> I just tried it because my, my ex wanted us, she was trying to save the relationship. She said, let's go to relationship counseling. All right, let's go. And that, that, it worked because we broke up and, mm-hmm. and we, we should have been broke up. It was clear we had no business together. And I just started working on myself individually. And, and you know, she just, you know, took me back to my childhood and just kind of what pattern started. Amazing. And it just, she was just showing me like, hey, this mm-hmm. is why you do this. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate it. And I still, yeah. you know, I try to use those tools to, that I learned from 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 her to, um, you know, work through it. But, you know, I have new shit now that I got to deal with and I need to go back mm-hmm. and um, really, and really, really deal with it because, like, I'm getting too old to go to jail. Like, I'm 36. Mm-hmm. So I've never been in any type of trouble. It's too late for me to start getting in trouble because I, 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 I lost my temper or something, so. So let me let me try to let me try to fix this or try to you know do something about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you for sharing some of your story. Yeah, yeah. it resonated with me a lot. So thank you. And being so I, I, vulnerable is such a thrown around word, but just like yourself and human, I'm just mm-hmm. like I feel uh, I feel like this in your presence. <laughs> you know, so mm-hmm. grateful. Yeah. yeah. Um. I don't know if you want to do this because of what you said earlier about Instagram, but if you want to let people know where they can follow you, <laughs> but also you don't have to. Yeah. I mean, I can put it in the description or something. I don't okay. Know. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, I, I never tell people to follow me. I don't know. I probably should, but I don't. You don't have to do anything. You can just say, here it is. If you want to be drawn to me. There you go. <laughs> they'll find it. If, if they want it, they'll find it. Where you can find me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They know I'd be. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. They know. Thank you again, Jimmy. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Adam. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you for listening to I'm Fine, It's Fine podcast. My name is Amber Autry. I'm a comedian based here in Nashville and internationally touring. You can find me on all platforms at Amber Autry Comedy. And I am Melanie Reese. I'm a trauma therapist here in Nashville. You can find me across all platforms at Trauma Therapy Nashville. We really appreciate you listening so much. And if you want to give a little extra for free, make sure you're liking, subscribing, rating, reviewing, sharing with your friends, talking about it to literally everyone you see. Because it helps so much, and we're so grateful for the extra effort. And if you like what you're hearing and you want some bonus material, that includes interviews with other practitioners and all the juicy stuff that Amber and I talk about that doesn't go into the normal podcast, um, we'd love to have you subscribe. You can find the link in our bio, and $5 a month, you can do it. Thank you. Thanks.